Here we are. This is called içli köfte. Chicken translation, sensitive meatballs. One of the best foods you can eat in the whole world. What is içli köfte? It's crunchy bulgur outside and inside heavenly minced meat with some walnuts and pistachios. But the beauty of this crunchy outside is magical. And I want you to know this beautiful thing all the way from the Middle East. So let's start cooking. Everything starts by three tablespoons of semolina. And I'm going to fill it with 150 milliliters of water. And this will rise up a bit. This has to sit for a while. This semolina is gonna help to bring the bulgur together and make it more like a doughy texture. But this is very hot to mix with meat, so it will cool down for a while. Meanwhile, I'm going to start cooking the inside. For that, we need half a kilogram of minced meat. I'm gonna throw in a butter. This is wheel, but you can use lamb meat or you can mix both. Now, this is the meat that is gonna go inside. And you can see there's a bit of fat. It's not really fatty, but there's fat. And this is the meat that I'm going to use for the outside. And this is almost fatless. So, the difference. My butter has melted and I'm going to throw in the mincemeat. The mincemeat is really important and most of the parts in the world, it might look similar, but the taste is rather low. What are the tips that is gonna make this mincemeat great? Number one, the type of the mincemeat. It has to be from the ribs area, two times grinded. Secondly, onion is very important. For half a kilo, three onions. When it starts to change color like this, it's time for the onion to get in. That looks a lot, but the onion gives the sour and the sweet taste. And with the acid, the onion prevents the meat from lumping and clustering together as well. Third, it's how you cook it. At the first five or six minutes, really high heat, searing outside and adding the onion, the mincemeat will give some water away. And when it starts to soak it back, it has to soak back the onion water and that will change everything and then after five to seven minutes we have to turn it to lower heat the lower heat is gonna cook it like a kebab and we have to stir time to time that's also really important and finally the total cooking time will at least take 25 minutes meanwhile when that's happening the onions should disappear in color if you still see the onions and the mincemeat looks cooked it's not it has to really turn into the color Another thing, we have to put the salt at the first minutes for the taste, to increase the taste of the meat and the onion. And we have to put the other half of the salt at the last minutes for the salty taste. The salt works in two ways and that's really important. And finally, when we are cooking, as it starts to cook more, there's going to be some flavor at the bottom of the pan. And we want that flavor. We can do it by putting a bit like few tablespoons of water and deglaze the pan back to the flavor of the crema. When you do all these, it's gonna be a gorgeous crema. Now I'm going to use a stand mixer for the mixture, but you can do it by hand. You can even do it in a food processor. Unpreferable, but it still works and it's okay. What we do, we have two cups of very fine bulgur. It's different from couscous. Fine bulgur, you can find it in Turkish markets, Arab markets, in many markets. It's really one of the superfoods in the world. So fine bulgur goes in two cups. You can't do this recipe with bigger size bulgur. That's something I should include. 200 grams of fine minced meat. The three tablespoons semolina goes in. This is gonna help the bulgur to stick. Now, I will let this start. This is gonna go on until it really becomes a nice dough mixing together, three ingredients. Then we turn it off and then we add the spices. And the spices are really simple actually. A teaspoon of salt. And if your pepper paste is very salty, you can reduce it, so watch out. A teaspoon of cumin and a teaspoon of black pepper. I know like everything is becoming really expensive and etc. Actually this mixture, forget the inside, you can just use the outside to make small meatballs and make it a soup 
make it fried like it, and it will be really tasty. Heap tablespoon of pepper paste. If you don't put pepper paste, there are some versions in Turkey that they don't, still work, but pepper paste gives it a better taste. Or if you don't have pepper paste, you can use tomato paste as well, but as I said, best one is pepper paste. So we'll let it work again. Okay. Now, after making mix for about two minutes, what happens is it has this consistency, nice looking dough, but still, when I feel it with my hands, I feel that the semolina and the bulgur is really thick. And as you can see, when I do this, it starts to crack. So this is not ready. To make it ready, we are going to do something that we actually do when we also do hummus. We're going to use ice. We're going to put ice. Ah! The first one went away. So be careful. If you have a cover, Rock found it. We put one by one the ice and let it knit. If you are going to do this by hand, this will be between your hands. Why do we use ice? Because this netting action warms up the thing and will change the taste. Without it cools it back down. Now, after 10 minutes, our dough is in a condition like this. Now, what we're gonna do, I have plain flour and I'm going to add a bit of it. Now, as you can see, this is really sticky. It sticks to my hand. This has to be in such a consistency that it's going to be always sticky, but it shouldn't leave a lot of itself to my fingers. The amount of water that the bulgur soaks differs sometimes even from the same brand. So we're going to arrange the consistency by adding the sufficient amount of flour. So I have a cup here. I'm going to add it slowly and slowly and check it time to time. After half a glass, this is how it is right now. Still a bit sticky, so I'll have to add more. As you remember, it was on the side. Now it gathered together. <laughs> oh, super. Now, as we look at it, it's a bit sticky, but wet your hands and when you wet it, if it's round and soft again, then it's all done. This has to sit for about at least half an hour on the side. Damp cloth on top so that it doesn't go bad like this. And I'm going to put it at the back. This is called the flat beater. If you use the flat beater, it's the best for knitting. When we move to the crema, as you can see, the onions disappear. That's what we want. The goodness is at the bottom of the pan, so a bit of water for deglazing and one knob of butter as well so that it will increase the taste make it more like a kebab now this is almost ready i'm turning it off finally we have some pistachios if you don't have pistachios you can use walnuts that's all okay or you can use pistachios and walnuts i've roughly chopped them when it's really fine it becomes like a powder it feels a bit meaningless in my sense so I believe it's better like this and we have the parsley I very finely chop the stems and throw this to the pan first why do I do this they are rougher I want them to be cooked a bit and roughly chop the rest in Turkey we do a lot of mincing so this knife I have designed five, six years ago, first specially for me. Then we made it a product in Refikada. You can find it in Etsy if you do a lot of shopping and you care about chef knives. This is a special chef knife done for homes and home cooks like me. It feels as if it's a part of your hand. So I put all this in. What a flavor. The butter, the meat, the onion, pistachios. All great. If you want it to be hot a bit, you can put some red flake pepper as well, but it's unnecessary right now. I forgot to put the final tour of black pepper and the final tour of salt. We can eat just like this. Yeah. Yes, but we shouldn't. We won't. <laughs> what we're gonna do, the filling should be really cold, so I'm going to take it outside and let it cool for a while. How we do it, the fun part comes. Now, 
we haven't waited for too long, but it's okay for us. Now I'm going to pick a piece, like a small tangerine actually. So around 75 grams, now it's 74, not bad. What we do, wet our hands first, like this, and then I press it so much that it's like a ball. Then make it more like a dolma, like this. Then wet one finger, put it in the middle, now it's a bit sticky. Actually, it's like working with mud. Could be, yeah. What I do with my finger, I press it in the palm. Press it in the palm and turn. 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 And then, as it's big enough, like this. By the way, this is also a really nice one for the beginners. Like this, it's okay. But I want to make it even thinner. So, two fingers wet it. Press it in the palm and turn. Press it in the palm and turn. Press it in the palm and turn until we are sure that the sides are really thin and kind of wiggly because they're thin and can get in a lot of kima. Whoop, you go. Shake it a bit and put some more. Almost to the top. First, like I don't want to put two of my hands inside because it sometimes parsley sticks. What I do, I press it a bit like that. Make my hands round like this and press. This is like an American football with edges. The word ichli, it has two meanings. The other meaning is sensitive. Do we really have to make the sides like this? No, because the dough is thicker at the sides. There's no meat, but there's this incredible crunchiness. So we love that crunchiness. So well done, like this. While someone from my team is gonna continue and do this, I'm gonna show you an easier version. I have a small favor to ask you guys. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, now is a great time. It's a really nice New Year's Christmas gift for our team. Please subscribe and like it. And we have this nice button called Super Thanks. If you liked the video very much, Super Thanks is there for you. Now, how do we do it? We have a stretch film here. Yes. A little longer than the board. Then I wet my two hands and wet the total of the stretch film. Why do we wet it? For it not to stick. Yes, for it not to stick. What I'm going to do, I'm going to just put it here and try to make a rectangle. I leave a little bit of space here and a little bit of space here and close this. Now it's about a centimeter. I'm going to make it a little lower than half a centimeter. I'm going to use this as a rolling pin, thin it this way from both sides. What's hard is trying to make it even because different than the dough, where you press it can be thinner and the other side could be thicker. Okay, now I open this and I'm going to cut this in half, but this will stay as it is. Then I don't want to cut the stretch film. I'm going to use the back of my knife and then take the stretch film again back here and pick this up. Voila. Here. For example, here is very thin and there is an excess part which I cannot use. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take this part from here, cut it and make this part a little stronger. And then wet my hand and press it so that it's thicker. Why am I giving this much of a detail? If you want to do this and you invest your time, I don't want you guys to fail. And these are small tips normally your grandma's, grandpa's give to you. And this channel, I want it to be about giving that old information the credit. Now, I'm going to make a round four. I have my vegetarian sensitive meatball version. What I'm going to do is put this on top and then the fun part starts. Why do we need the strange film on top? To control the dough much better. First, I press the sides, making sure that they seal. Then, when I look at this one, for example, this can be done, but it might like have some crema here. So a little bigger glass would be better. What I do, I press it and turn it, still with the stretch film on. Turning is really important. We take these sides for the new köfte. And now it's time to check the corners. As you can see, there is an opening here. What we do, wet our hands, close it and seal it. And I do this for all the sides. Okay. 
So we're going to use these stretch films over and over again until we finish it or we make it like the American football. Now I'm going to cook some of this in the air fryer so I want to show you how this is really great on the air fryer. If this stick, watch out, wet your hand and do it. Bulgur loves the oil. You can never have enough oil when bulgur is concerned. So what I'm going to do is put all these in and oil also the bottoms. All done. So this is going to go to the air fryer 190 degrees, 14 minutes. Meanwhile, when that is cooking, we check the olive oil temperature, it's 190 degrees. How do we understand that the oil is done? We put back of the wooden spatula. If when we put it, it immediately starts to fry like this, it means it is ready. Now I'm going to put these in. I'm not going to crowd the inside. I want to give a small break. You guys send us gorgeous messages and they're so valuable to us. And I feel surrounded with love. And now, because it's the gift season, we want to send some nice gifts every week to some of our lovely parts of the family. Today, we wanted to share with two people. One is Mortana Little. Actually, her name is Kelly. She always sends us messages, sends us texts. We feel blessed. Also, there's Craig and Marjorie, and Marjorie makes the food, and Craig tastes them, and we get their messages as well and so beautiful. I wanted to send them some meze plates from our Refikadan shop, some sauce that I have mixed and from my knife to show our gratitude from every week from now on we want to do this. Thank you so much for the thanks. Thanks are so precious and for great messages and sharing your love. How do we understand when it cooks? This is like golden brown. We wanted a bit darker brown so two more minutes after this. Okay, now greatly cooked. I'm gonna put it in a sieve for the extra oil to drip. Okay, my köftes, which I've done in the air fryer, as you can see, is not different at all. The oil that was dripping from the Köftes, I put it back so we don't throw it away. Very important thing, this oil can be used at least five times until it goes bad. When it cools down, filter it with something with a sieve and put it in a jar. Don't make it when it's hot, it's very dangerous. And then put it in a place which is away from the sun and reuse it at least five times. But if you don't want to deep fry it, you can air fry it. And if you don't have an air fryer, you can use the oven. 200 degrees top and down put it on a tray oil it a lot and then put it in the oven for about 20 minutes and it's also going to be great so and when you air fry it still when it's hot maybe have a small pst on top for the last minute and when we do that and compare these two looks almost the same who's gonna eat it with me now it's köfte time sir And how do we eat it? With a lot of lemon, that's really a must. You can eat it with a bit of mint or this kashik salata. So we have the recipe on the channel. I'm gonna put it here. It's cucumbers, tomatoes, onions. With and some parsley and mint. Mm -hmm. One of the best foods that you can eat in the world. See how thin inside? It's gorgeous. It's one of my dream foods in my top five this is exactly top five mm. i also want to show you this the small little ichli köftes easier to make mm. this also tastes really good thank you guys take care until next week and also thank you for all the messages that you have sent about what happened last week in istanbul i feel like you're my family all over the world Thank you.